Troubleshooting Tunnel Down, Part 1, IPsec UDP. In this video, we'll talk about and troubleshoot some IPsec UDP tunnel down situations. We'll start by listing common reasons tunnels might go down. Then we'll move on to defining the troubleshooting scope, examine tools such as the topology page, live view and alarms. Lastly, we'll do some live troubleshooting to bring it all together. Tunnels can be down for various reasons, including a tunnel is administratively down, an interface is down or misconfigured, the next hop is unreachable, partial or complete circuit failure, a firewall dropping packets, NAT discovery or traversal issues, or the tunnel encryption key is incorrect. This is not an exhaustive list, but these are some of the most common issues seen in the field. We may be alerted to a tunnel being down by an alarm, either visually in the orchestrator UI, or perhaps it was emailed to us. The first clue may be the content of that alarm. Did it tell us that one tunnel was down, or many tunnels were down? How many appliances are reporting this? If just one tunnel is down, it will be seen on two appliances. That already tells us the scope of the problem. We can focus our investigations on just those two appliances and just those two sites. However, if many tunnels are down, we'll need to examine the orchestrator UI to see what's going on. There are various places we can check. The tree will show red for sites where there are critical alarms, a possible indicator of tunnels being down. You can examine monitoring alarms to see which sites are reporting tunnels down. You can also look at the monitoring topology page. This gives you an overview of your entire SD-WAN. And if you have many sites and tunnels, it could be a bit overwhelming. Green is good, whilst amber or red could indicate a problem. You can click on a tunnel to get more information, see how many tunnels are down, and use tools such as LiveView, Traceroute, etc. Okay. Let's begin some live troubleshooting. Note that some of the transitions shown here have been accelerated. It may take several minutes for your orchestrator to report alarms clearing. Let's look at the alarms page. Which appliances are reporting the tunnels down? All three are, but B1 is reporting many tunnels are down, whilst the other two appliances are reporting individual tunnels down to B1 only. This suggests the issue is localized to the B1 appliance or circuit. Let's bring up Config Tunnels to see more detail. We can see one tunnel is in admin down state. Let's fix that. Nothing has changed though. Tunnels are still down. Let's look a little closer at those tunnels on B1. Do we see a pattern? Let's sort by appliance name to help. B1 is showing all tunnels are down on the INET1 interface, whilst the other appliances only show one tunnel down each. This is a good indication that the likely source of the problem is on the INET1 interface or circuit on B1. Make a note of that interface IP. Let's focus just on this appliance now. Select it on the tree, and then click on Config Interfaces. We can match the source IP or label name either visually or by searching on the top right. Is that interface down, either administratively or otherwise? We can see it is admin down here. It would show down in red for link failure. If that is the case, check the cabling is good and where hard-coded speed and duplex is set that it matches on both sides. Auto negotiation is recommended as it also automatically resolves straight or crossover cabling issues. Check the switch or router port is up. If need be, as a test, you can try plugging it into a known good device, perhaps a laptop, to verify the EC1 port comes up. And do the same on the switch or router port as well. Since our interface is admin down, we'll set this to admin up. An easy fix. But what if the link is up and green, but the tunnels are still down? Well, in that case, we should have some more clues from the alarms page. 
If the interface link is up, the next hop will be checked for reachability. If that alarm also fired, you know you have either an IP addressing problem, the wrong next hop configured, or possibly a switch port VLAN mismatch. If your switch port is VLAN tagged and is not the native VLAN, you'll need to add the tag to the interface on config deployment. Of course, it is possible that your next hop, if not directly connected, is actually down. Our interface next hop address is wrong. Let's fix that. Refreshing the alarms page, and we can see the next top alarm has cleared. If the next top alarm isn't raised, assuming the alarm isn't disabled, then we have validated the network path from the EC1 interface through the cable to the switch or router port and confirmed layer 3 to the next top is good. We can now see some tunnels came up, but we still have a single tunnel down between B1 and DC1. It's no longer clear that B1 is where the problem lies, so we'll widen our troubleshooting scope again to both appliances. Next, let's validate NAT Discovery has succeeded in detecting the actual IP address and port of the other appliance interface. It's important to check this on both sides. This is interesting, and our first clue as to where the issue might lie. B1 has had its remote IP and port discovered by DC1, but DC1 has not discovered B1s. Let's check the NAT setting. Orchestrator creates tunnels with the IP address of each appliance's WAN interface based on the label names assigned to the interface and those label names assigned in config business intent overlays. Orchestrator knows the IP address of the interface as they are in config deployment, and by default will create tunnels using those IP addresses as is. If the NAT flag is set for an interface, Orchestrator will instead create a tunnel with the destination set to the IP address discovered by Cloud Portal, rather than the IP address configured on the WAN interface. If the interface is privately addressed and attached to a router NATted behind a public IP, the NAT flag must be on. In our case, this is a private lab, so no NAT is present. On config tunnels, check that remote IP and port and discovered IP and port make sense. A private IP in the discovered IP column for an internet interface is probably incorrect, and it should be very unlikely. Check Config interfaces to confirm the public IP was detected. Your appliance will need internet access and be able to reach portal.silverpeak.cloud via HTTPS for public IP detection to work successfully. Important note, if both Edge Connect WAN interfaces are behind firewalls performing PAT, NAT discovery will not work. One side must have either a public IP address configured or at the very least a one-to-one -one NAT rule or port forwarding rule on the firewall. Typically, it is sufficient for just the data center appliance to have that. But if you require a fully meshed WAN and your WAN interfaces are all private, you'll need port forwarding on all your remote routers as well. If NAT discovery is all good, the issue may be beyond the next top and Traceroute may be able to help us here. If you have multiple WAN circuits, you can leverage the orchestrator's Live View feature to run Traceroute right from the UI. Alternatively, you can use the EC CLI and Traceroute manually, but either way, this may help you understand at what point past the next hop the circuit fails. Traceroute may reveal partial or complete circuit loss, depending on whether any hops respond at all, or if some respond some of the time. Run Traceroute in both directions, as this can also aid in determining the likely point of failure. Note that Traceroute may not provide any meaningful results, depending on intermediate firewalling policy. If the tunnel is going down and up repeatedly, and Traceroute indicates loss, then there may be too much loss on the circuit to keep the tunnel up. The loss may be a circuit fault, or it could also be severe congestion. 
Check the configured bandwidths on config deployment match the CIR or committed information rate that has been provisioned by your service provider. If the bandwidth setting is higher than the available bandwidth on the link, the Edge Connect may be overrunning the circuit causing tunnel keeper lives to be lost. Check throughput on the orchestrator at Monitoring, Interface Trends or using Live View to see if the link is congested. A fully utilized link won't automatically result in tunnels going down unless the configured bandwidths are higher than the CIR. If your tunnels are not flapping and traceroute is failing partway into the WAN, it's more likely complete loss and the service provider may need to investigate further. Regardless of the traceroute results, we should go a step further and run TCP dump to find out what's happening to tunnel packets. Are they being transmitted and received by both Edge Connect appliances? Whilst we can run packet captures from the UI, it's more helpful to run TCP dump in the CLI to see it live. We're going to do this on both appliances with the problem underlay. From config tunnels, make a note of the local interface and remote IP. We'll use those for filtering. Next, in either an SSH session or a CLI session from the orchestrator UI, enter enable mode, then run TCP dump minus NI, the interface name, host, the IP address of the remote Edge Connect appliance WAN interface. We're running TCP dump with the end switch to disable name and port resolution. We just want to see the raw IPs and port numbers. The I switch, specifying the interface name to capture on, this may be WAN0 or another interface. The host filter to capture just the remote Edge Connect WAN interface IP. The filter will be different on each Edge Connect, as we want to filter only on the remote destination we're interested in to avoid capturing all local tunnels which might be working and flood your CLI with uninteresting packets. It's important to run these at the same time on both appliances, so we can see in real time as a packet leaves one appliance and arrives, or not, at the destination appliance. If you see packets leaving on one TCP dump window, but not arriving on the other, and the same on the other appliance TCP dump window, there are a few possibilities. The destination is a public IP and could not be reached, either because of circuit failure somewhere between or near the remote site. Trace route in both directions may help determine the point of failure and the circuit provider may need to investigate further. Firewalling. Was an ACL configured and is dropping these packets? Examine your firewall logs and rules to ensure the tunnel packets are being permitted. 4G or LTE on one side and PAT on the other. A tunnel cannot come up over an LTE link if the destination is also behind PAT. A missing port forwarding rule on a router. If your ECs have a private IP, you will need to configure one-to-one -one NAT or port forwarding rules on the router on at least one side of the tunnel. The destination is a private IP and cannot be routed over the internet. Did you remember to tick the NAT flag on config deployment on the remote appliance? In our example, we see packets leaving DC1 and arriving at B1. But B1's packets to DC1 are not arriving at DC1. If, as in our situation, you see packets in both directions on one appliance, but only in one direction on the other appliance, then in addition to some of the above points, your possibilities are one-way circuit failure, Unusual but not impossible. Your service provider will need to be engaged to assist here. A firewall dropping packets. Perhaps an ACL on an interface? In our case, it is indeed the last one. A firewall dropping packets inbound to DC1. We need to update our ACLs to permit those tunnel packets in from B1. Now that issue is identified and resolved, we can now see packets in both directions on both appliances. Let's see if our tunnel alarm's cleared. Yes, they cleared. And we can refresh the tunnels page 
and see that all tunnels are now up. This concludes the troubleshooting process. Before we wrap up, let's briefly talk about a slightly different scenario. If everything checks out, you have next stop reachability and you can see tunnel packets in both directions on both appliances, but all underload tunnels are down on a particular appliance, it may be an encryption key issue. This is rare as Orchestrator manages key rotation across the entire fabric. Provided your appliances have reachability of the orchestrator and at the very least the cloud portal, tunnel keys should always be in sync. You can examine the orchestrator UI page at Support IPsec UDP Status. It will tell you if any appliances do not have the active key. If the problem appliance shows no in red for active key, then this will prevent it from being able to bring up all underlay tunnels. Please open a case with our TAC team to resolve this issue. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>